Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Merlin Rothfeld. On behalf of Online Trading Academy and OT Academy, we're very happy to have you here with us today. We try to bring you kind of timely topics that are very important and relevant in today's society, whether those are about long-term investing, short-term investments, uh, looking at, oh, all sorts of different pieces. And today we're talking about one that's very, very important, ICOs. Initial coin offerings. This has become an extremely hot topic over the last couple of years. And to be honest, one of the biggest areas of financial fraud and scams that I have ever seen, even going back to the dot com days when companies would just add dot com to their company website and all of a sudden they would take off, this is far, far worse. So I'll walk you through the basics of this today, but we're going to have to, of course, start with a wonderful disclaimer. So there's all this fine legal speak here for you guys to read. I'm certainly not giving you investment advice. Today will be really more an understanding of ICOs, what they are, how they work, uh, the differentiation between that and an initial public offering, and then what are some very simple things that we can do to prevent from being caught up in the euphoria and scams that are out there with ICOs. So our topic today begins with the overall encompassing what is an ICO. Well, essentially, we have to look at how companies are attempting to raise capital. How are they being funded? And I'm going to start off by doing a, a step back, if you will, and go into something that should be familiar to everybody, but I want to make sure we understand the process of how a company goes public. I'm sure most of you watching right now have bought into uh, a stock. Well, at some point, that was an IPO, an initial public offering. So I want to walk you through the basics, just so you understand why this ICO craze is so popular and so significant right now. So let's begin with uh, how an IPO comes to fruition. Well, really the process of it is this. You start off with a small idea, right? You've got this idea to be a, a small startup, and you're really looking forward to growing this into a bigger one, but you probably don't have much money. So a lot of startups, they get out there and they find an angel investor. Now, I've color-coded these four visuals to make it easy for you. Yellow is what, if it was your company, what you would be in control of. The green is where you're giving up ownership or paying for that extra fee. So here you see the angel investor. You know the angel investor is taking a big chunk of that company to give you that startup capital because it's high risk. Now, your eye on the prize is to become a large startup, right? Go from working out of your, your living room to getting some office space or really getting bigger. From there, you're probably going to need to get some venture capital to get to that big level. Now, of course, we want to get bigger and bigger and bigger, so we're going to look at what is our goal next. Next step there is going to be to get to that big company level, and of course, that requires what? More venture capital, more money, more capital to get this thing going to the size that we want that we can ultimately get it to go public. So you can see right away in the development of this company, you're giving away on each of those green bubbles to the angel investors, to the VCs, you're giving away ownership and you're probably paying a pretty hefty percentage for that money to have that uh, ability to get, get that expansion. Now we begin the initial public offering process, the IPO process. First step there is going to be to hire an underwriting firm. Now these are the wonderful financial institutions that you and I know, companies like Merrill Lynch and Goldman Sachs and Bank of America, they'll be out there with their underwriting departments competing to get this company to go public. And there's a process here, and it's very lengthy, but this is kind of a truncated edition of it. First off, you're going to have to negotiate terms with the underwriter. So you're going to go to Goldman Sachs and say, okay, well, we'll we feel our company is worth you know $500 million, and they'll come in and negotiate that down. They'll buy uh, a certain amount of shares from you, or a set amount of shares, and they will basically buy all those shares at a set price and negotiate all those terms, the fees and everything, and trust me, there's some big fees there. They're also going to start the process once you've negotiated and gotten your terms set, they'll file a document with the SEC called a registration statement. In this statement, it identifies all the key principal shareholders, who they are, background checks, they're going to check all the company's financial numbers because the SEC is doing what most investors should be doing on their own, which is due diligence. They're making sure that this company is legit. Now, certainly some fall through the cracks, but for the most part, it's there to make sure that whatever goes on to an exchange and becomes public has jumped through certain thresholds or certain levels of quality and control. Next, we're going to go to the roadshow. This is where the underwriter takes it around the world, around the country, and, and stops at all the major cities, gets their clients on board, tries to generate interest for this. And we see this hype all the time. We saw it with the Facebook IPO and so many others, where they're pumping it up, trying to get you all excited, so that drives up the, the price that the IPO will generate. 
Now, if they find interest out there and they, let's say, let's say I'm Goldman Sachs and I'm underwriting, you know, Merlin.com. It's gonna be the next best uh, magic website. And I do a roadshow and I find I've got some investment bankers in Colorado that really love the project. I might allocate part of my IPO to those prospects so I can start to spread around that risk. The next step is going public on an exchange, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, what, whatever you want. Um, but you notice I put that in red. So we've got all these green bubbles taking away money. That's costing the owner of the business money along the way. The red circle basically means now you are under the scrutiny of the SEC. There is regulation, red tape. That's why I painted it in red. So you can see this is complicated, rather lengthy. And this is an abbreviated version. I tried to just fit this in for a, you know, a short webinar here. But you can see there's a lot of steps, a lot of hoops to jump through, a lot more participants along the way. Here is the ICO process. It's going to be a little bit different. And of course, I am monitoring the chat today out there, guys. So if you have some comments and suggestions, feel free to type them on in and I'll respond to them. Basically, you create what's called a white paper. I'm going to talk more about this here in a little bit because that's part of our way to identify scams. But a white paper is essentially what this new ICO is attempting to do. So, you know, I could really easily make that one up in a couple of hours. I create a token. So I go through all the mechanics and logistics of creating a token, and I can do this in under 60 minutes. I could probably do it in under 30 minutes if I really wanted to, right? I could, I could go out there and make this token online right now if I choose to and, and start marketing it right away. Our next step is I need to create hype. I need to market that token. So I need to go out and start um, paying for ad space on Facebook. Of course, <clears throat> that was kind of a joke because you can't do it on Facebook anymore. Uh, but use some social media sites. I'll be out there on Twitter blasting everybody and their mother to get in on this thing. Oh, it's the next greatest thing. You're going to get rich. You're going to get 100% rate of return within two days. You know, Just throw some bogus claim out there. Who cares? I can say anything that I want with this ICO because who's regulating it? Nobody, crickets. I could guarantee that you're going to make a thousand percent return per day with this ICO. No, you know, you all know that's stupid. No one would ever make that claim, but I can say it because there's no regulation. No one is going to tell me I can't do that. And there are sheeple out there. Sheeple are the masses that just believe anything they see. They're going to look at that marketing and go, wow, a thousand percent a day? I'm in. Sign me up. Uh -huh. Hook, line, and sinker. So, there's no oversight, no regulation. I can go out there and say whatever I want, pump them. Of course, most people are going to see right through that garbage, but there's a lot of scams out there that that's what they're trying to do, the fear of missing out. So let's go and, and do a side-by-side -side comparison of what you get versus from an ICO to an IPO. So an IPO, you get voting rights. So you are now technically a partial owner, so you can go vote. And when they have uh, the voting, you'll see a little ballot measure will be sent to your house. And most of us don't vote. I don't. I think I voted one time on a company a long time ago, but I don't. I don't send in the voting stuff anymore. But I have that option should I choose to. With an ICO, yeah, you get nothing there. You get no voting rights whatsoever. How about ownership? Yes, an IPO is you are now a part owner because you own shares of a publicly traded company. Therefore, you are entitled to some of the earnings out there as well. With the ICO, you own nothing, nothing. You have a digital address that says you have X amount of tokens. Now those tokens might fluctuate in value, but for the most part, you've got nothing. You have no ownership, you have no voting rights. Do you get dividends and payouts? No. Now with an IPO, it's up to the company. Now if it's an IPO, you probably aren't going to get dividends, but that's simply because it's a new company. They're going to keep that money internally and continue to grow it. Um, there are some IPOs that will declare a, a dividend out there, a payment, but I put a maybe there. ICOs, yeah, you're not getting dividends. You're not, why would they pay you out? Tradeability, this is a big one. Can you trade these things? Yes, an IPO, you can trade them because they're going to be listed on an exchange. They'll be on the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange or whichever one it's decided to list on. So it has a marketplace set for it. With an ICO, you don't have a place to trade them. What happens is the legitimate ones, the ones that are bigger, will go out to the different exchanges and work some agreement with an exchange like Binance or Poloniex and say, hey, we want to list our ICO token once it's out there on your exchange so people can trade it. And I'm sure there's some payment there uh, to allow that to happen. But a lot of these ICOs will never see the light of day on an exchange. 
So there's another big problem. You might have all these tokens of, a comp or of an ICO you think is going to be great, but you can't do anything with it. All right. So just to give you an idea of how much money is pouring into these things, here are some stats from 2017. You can see there really wasn't much. This is, uh, what do we got, in millions, right? Um, yeah, so U.S. raised by ICO, USD raised by ICO, you have $1.2 billion raised in December alone. Right? So this is a lot of money being generated for this ICO space. It is booming. Why? Because it's so easy for people to create the ICO and then they can create the hysteria around them, create that fear of missing out. All right, so now let's look at how to spot the scams. All right, hopefully you guys understand at this point that there are some significant differences between an initial public offering and an initial coin offering. And of course, they can keep issuing more and more coins. Um, before I go into how to spot a scam, I also want to make sure you guys make sure that you look at the number of tokens available for a sale. This is something that people make a big mistake on and when we buy a stock, people don't look at the number of shares that are out there either. Um, buying a, um, a Dash coin, for example, which is not an ICO but it's a cryptocurrency, you buy Dash, well you only have several million of those in existence. You buy something like Ripple, there's a hundred billion. Massive difference there, so uh, make sure you check and see how many of these tokens are available for that ICO. All right, so let's go to how to spot a scam. First one is to check the company itself. Are they incorporated? Right? This is a big step. I know that if I was to start a, an ICO, cryptocurrency, or really any business, I'm first going to start a business. I'm going to incorporate it. So therefore, I'm protecting myself, a layer of legal protection between me uh, and the market. That's what creating a business does. So is it incorporated? If it is, well, where is it incorporated? Is it the U.S.? Is it in Russia? Is it someplace that you have some recourse? You can maybe go contact them. Um, the other step is, is it a valid address? And a lot of the research I've been doing on this subject, a lot of these ICOs have addresses that don't even exist. They, they're, they're not even a real street in the city that they say that they're in. Um, others will just be a P.O. box. So if this is a legit idea, if this ICO is uh, creating some great product or service or technology that could revolutionize the way that these markets work, you would think that there would be a legitimate office space with some employees, especially because in the white paper, you're going to be seeing how many employees work there. You'll see the CEO, chief technical officers, the programmers, marketing department. So they're all operating out of a P.O. box that screams of a scam. There needs to be a location for these people to be working on the project that I'm putting my money in to support. All right. Next is, what is their online presence? You know, do they have a really quick website that was just slapped together that says coming soon? Probably not a legitimate one. Um, are there a lot of resources and information on their website that I can go and find and really understand what this project is all about? That is going to add a little bit more air of legitimacy. Now, keep in mind, that these ICO scammers know this stuff now and they're doing whatever they can to create legitimacy in these areas. So it really is important that you do your due diligence because remember, the SEC, and I know we have international viewers watching right now, uh, but the SEC is not regulating this in the US. There is some regulation going on in foreign countries, but for the most part, this is still wild, wild west. You know, just run up, claim that gold mine and start digging and hopefully you'll get something out of it. No one's saying anything yet. It will come, and I hope regulation does happen because I see too many people losing their shirts on this one. Uh, the last step, I put call them or just contact them. If there's no way to contact any representative from the company. I think that that's a problem. Remember, I'm trying to elicit or to, to get your business. I'm trying to get you to like what I do if I am an ICO, and I want to talk to you. I want to encourage you to invest in my ICO. I need your money because I need that for the project. If I'm a scam, I don't want you to be contacting me. I just want you to send your money over there because you're emotional and your fear of missing out of what I'm telling you I have. Ugh, getting me all worked up over here. All right, so let's go to how to spot a scam. This part here I just find absolutely fascinating. And there is so much deception and sleight of hand going on there. Don't get caught up in emotion. Now, this is one that was one of the hotter I, uh, ICOs for December of 2017. So it's fresh, folks. This one is fresh off the presses uh, and fresh off the scam report because they disappeared with about, they say between 2.7 and $4 million worth of investors' money. Huh. Yeah, no one's gonna get caught on this one either. So take a peek at this. This is a company called Benebit. 
right? And I'll show you the white paper here in a little bit so you get an understanding of what Benebit does. But here are, here's the team. John Laverty, co-founder and CEO. Howard Sharp, he's that co-founder and chief technical officer. And remember Victoria Ellison, she's a big player in this one. She's the chief financial officer. So one thing that you can do is check out their directors or their participants' profiles. LinkedIn is a great source. So what I did is I went through here, and let's focus on this guy right here, Howard Sharp. So are they real? Okay, let me just click on Howard Sharp here. Here's Howard Sharp's profile on LinkedIn. Now, you can see he was the chief technical officer at Benebit, formerly a principal software development engineer at Microsoft. Of course, if you really wanted to do your due diligence, you could contact Microsoft and verify employment. Say, yes, I have uh, Howard Sharp asking for employment at my company. Uh, is he, did he ever work for Microsoft? Just check. This is the guy who's gonna be running the whole show. Remember, ICOs are usually technology-related programs. So if he's the, the chief technical officer, I want to know that he actually is who he says he is. Uh, he also says he's got a track record of success serving as a contributor to several highly successful commercial applications. Really? I want to see those. What are you? What, what have you been doing? So let's just click his contact info here to see how legit he is. So we'll click on his contact info and you can see there's only way to get in touch with Howard Sharp, who's the CTO and co-founder of a, an ICO who wants your money. The only way you can find anything out about him is on LinkedIn. <laughs> Smell that? Fear. That sounds like a scam to me. All right, now let's go to one other example. Good, this is a good one. Here is a guy named Roger Ver. Now, I'm not a fan of Roger Ver, but he's in the Bitcoin space. He is an evangelist out there for it, always waving the flag for Bitcoin. And, you know, he has a similar profile here. You see he's got 500 connections just like the other guy did. Let's click on it and see what, how it is to get a hold of him. He's got his Twitter page out there. He's got his personal website. He's got another business company he's working on and uh, the LinkedIn profile. So right away, you can see that he has a greater presence. I have the ability to go and it, it seems like he's more of a legit person, right? Now, we can also go and check their references. See if they have any references and they say they worked with so-and-so, go check them out. Um, they have five, this, both of these guys had 500 plus affiliates or contacts on LinkedIn. Contact a couple of them. A lot of them are fake profiles. How fake? Let me tell you how fake. This is the Tower House School. It's basically a boys school, right? And this is, I don't know where exactly in the UK, but this is in, in England. Uh, I really want you to take a close look at Mrs. Leslie Barnett. She's the junior school coordinator and three in year three something. I might have cut it off in the copying. I also want you to take a look at Mr. Ben Payton. He's the deputy headmaster. Now, these two are actually working at the school. But look at the profile pictures for Benefit. Here at the top is the profile pictures for Benefit. You notice that John Laverty is Mr. Ben Payton. Ben Payton is real, John Laverty is fake, and he doesn't even have a LinkedIn profile. It's fake. You also see Victoria Ellison. She's their chief financial officer. She is handling all the money, yet she's the junior school coordinator for year three at a boys' school in real life. So what they, these guys got busted for basically taking profile pictures from another company's website, flipping it, making it their team, creating bogus profiles on LinkedIn, and stealing upwards of 2.7 to $4 million from people. Scam alert. All right, how are some other ways we can spot scams? Well, first step, read the white paper. What is the white paper? Well, the white paper is a document that every ICO puts out there, every one of them. And if they don't have one, don't even put a penny into it. A white paper should cover several things. Number one, it identifies a problem in the industry. It says, here is a problem that we see. And then it offers you the solution. Here is what we propose could fix that problem. We're also going to talk about implementation. How are we going to fix that problem with our solution? And how are we going to implement that ICO and our technology on a global level to achieve that end means? It also tells you what the, who the team members are. Now, one other piece that I want to add in here under implementation. I would advise you to also look and see what the lockout period or vesting periods are. It's actually in the smart contract. And when you go to, the, to purchase an ICO, they will tell you in the white paper what the vesting is. And what do I mean by vesting? It's similar to your 401k program, right? When you put money into your 401k program, uh, if you're there for one year and, and your company matches, excuse me, put money in your 401k and they match, 
the first year, you don't get all the matching. You get like 20%. And after, let's say, five years, you actually get it all because now you're vested. You've been there a while. Vesting for ICOs works the same way. Depending on which level you've bought in at, there's a certain lockout period where you might have to wait six months to sell or do anything with your ICO tokens that you've purchased. You might also want to look at the allocations because what happens quite frequently is the company that issues the ICO, and let's say that um, the ICO we're going to sell today is Merlin's ICO, right? And Merlin's ICO is going to sell you, there's 100 million tokens, 100 million out there. And I'm keeping, let's say 100 million, I'm keeping 50 million for myself and my development team. I'm only selling 50 million. That seems a bit, bit rich. So basically, I'm going to use the euphoria to get you guys to drive up the price. I now have, over, or have half the shares, and I'm going to get rich off of this. So normally what you see is a small percentage allocation. So if I'm selling $100 million, you know, maybe $1 million is saved for the development team and, and boosting the product, et cetera. So too much of an over allocation to the ICO itself could be a red flag. Also, make sure you check the vesting. If there's no vesting period, to me, that's also a sign of a scam because you kind of want people to be holding on to these things for a while, and that kind of creates more uh, emphasis and euphoria for your ICO. All right, what else do we have? We've got, oh, well written. Oh, this is a wonderful one. Yes, I make all kinds of typos in the work that I do, but if I'm going to go public with something, if I'm going to have an ICO, I'm running it by a legal department. I'm running it by somebody who is very well versed in English. I certainly am not the person that would be running that by. Um, but take a peek at this. I ran through Benebit, uh, Benebit's white paper, and I just did a quick glance at it, and I found this image here, and I just, I had, I literally laughed out loud in my office. I'm like, this is ridiculous. This, I would spot this because this is not an English grammar thing, but take a peek at this loyalty rewards. Now, Benebit is basically a, a glorified reward, rewards loyalty program. That was a tough one for me to say. Uh, but look at the numbers here. How on earth can you expect me to buy into your company if you can't make this match up? So, for example, you see that uh, the loyalty, the major players out there, and what they're doing is they're breaking apart that industry and saying, look, 12% or 4,617 uh, 4, members uh, is 12%. And then you have uh, 664 million members is 17%. First off, that number at the top, 12% of 4,617 members, how, that, that doesn't make any sense. That's wrong, right? Then you look down here at the 29% is 1.1 million members. Okay, I get that. 29% 1.1 million members. And 42% is 1.6 billion members. Now, I actually am kind of a math person, so I was going to make fun of my lack of math skills, but come on. If 29% of anything is 1.1 million, how can 42% be 1.6 billion? That, that makes no sense whatsoever. So they can't even do basic math in their white paper. This one is clearly... Uh, erroneous and a scam. Another one, is it original? You hear about this quite often, uh, a white paper. I mentioned at the very beginning of this, I could create a white paper in just a matter of minutes. How? I can download somebody else's work, put it on my computer, do a search and replace so I now have the outline of the white paper and then just type in the, you know, what I want to achieve in there. And that's what's been happening. A lot of them have been literally copied and pasted white papers from somebody else. So is it an original work? You can go out there. Community groups are great for this because there are so many skeptics out there. They're digging through white papers around uh, the community saying, are any of these the same? And a lot of them are. They're just cut and paste, copied things. Uh, another sign that this could probably be a scam. Now, here is one of the bigger ones out there. Let's be clear. If you're buying into an ICO, you should be buying into the vision. You should be buying into the idea, what that ICO attempts to achieve. Could it be the most revolutionary uh, new technology ever? That's what I want to buy into. If a company is selling you on the idea that, hey, if you put in $10,000, you'll be making 20% returns per month, what, what am I buying into? I'm buying into what sounds like a scam because you're not telling me what you're selling and what your product is. You're just saying, I'm going to make a bunch of money. This is the case with a company called BitConnect. Now, here is an actual table from BitConnect, and this is just ridiculous. Come on, anybody here who's been trading for any amount of time knows how absurd this is. If you use their proprietary volatility software and you put in, let's say, um, $100, you could receive up to 40% returns per month. 40%, I'm going to repeat that slowly, 40% percent returns per month. Now, if anybody here is a trader, 
you would understand that the average rate of returns for the market as a whole, for your investment portfolio, for your 401k programs is eight to 10% per year. And they're saying they can do four times that a month. But wait, there's more. I feel like it's a late night infomercial right now. But wait, if you act now, if you put in over $10,010, you'll get a bonus, look right here at the bottom, a bonus of 0.25% per day. This is incredible, I, sign me up. So many people came out and were blasting this company for being a pyramid scam, which essentially is what it was. And the irony of it all is in their marketing material, there is actually an image showing you that this is in fact a pyramid scam. I just love how cleanly this panned out. This is from BitConnect and they're basically showing you their pyramid scam. So if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. All right, how else can we spot a scam? It all deals with community. So what I encourage you to do is go to something like GitHub. GitHub is a open source programming mecca. So if anything is an open source code, as most ICOs are, you'll find that project being worked on on GitHub. And there also you can spot the community and who is involved in it. So what I did is I took Benebit, which we've established at this point is a total scam, and one that I actually own right now, full disclosure, I own a considerable amount of this one called Civic on the left. Now, let's just look at the two tables here closely. Let's start with Benebit. There is 54 lines of code on Benebit. 54. I mean, that's not even a page of text. Um, there's one user. And I went and looked at the code for Benebit, and all that code is, the only thing that's in their repositories on GitHub, which is where all the code is going to be, is code to sell the token. It's basically just the ICO token sale. That's all it is, 54 lines saying how that token is going to be sold. On the flip side, take a look at Civic on the left. You have 88,000 lines of code. Now, of course, I could, you know, throw a whole bunch of fake code on there just to have a big number, but look at the bottom. You have 664 users of this, meaning you have an active community. You have a lot of people working on this code to make this community project or this uh, technology, Civic, which is a kind of an identity coin, come to reality. You also have commits. This is a question I got earlier about what commits are. It says 15,000 commits. A commit is where somebody looks at a big piece of code that the developers have put out there, and if they make a change to it, it's called a commit. So the programmers for this, the developers, have put code out on GitHub, and there have been 15,000 changes where a member of the community says, well, you know what, this might be better written like this, and they'll review it, and it just tracks the changes kind of like it would on a, um, a Word document if you had track changes. That's what a commit is. Uh, and there's a lot of activity. So if you were to say which one of these looks legit, clearly the one on the left looks like a legit coin. There's community, there's activity, they actually have code. The one on the right, you've got no community, no one, and you have one programmer. This reeks of a scam. All right, so we went through that rather quickly. Um, I know that there's a lot of other pieces we can look at, but those are kind of high level ones. And I really hope that you guys understand I'm not bashing ICOs. I think they're a great way to raise capital. But with that ability to raise capital so quickly, we have foregone a lot of the risk management, meaning there's no oversights of the company, there's no oversights of the project, nobody checking, there's no recourse whatsoever. And because you're paying in a cryptocurrency, you're never going to get your money back. There's nothing. The IRS is going to look at you and go, or the FBI is going to look at I don't care. That was your problem. We don't regulate this market. Goodbye. Go away. So there are good ones out there and there are bad ones out there. Stat statistics say, and of course we all hear the stat that 90% of businesses fail in the first five years. That is not true. It's actually about 50% of businesses fail in the first five years. In the first two years, 30% uh, fail. In the first year, 20% fail. With ICOs, it will probably be much higher. I, I think, I just kind of get that sense as to what's happening out there, because right now you are having people who are creating them just every single day, very quickly with no oversight. So. There's good ones out there, there are bad ones out there. I can tell you this, I probably will never buy into an ICO, meaning before it goes public, before it comes to market. I do own tokens, which were at one point ICOs, but I'm waiting for them to mature. I'm waiting for the community to see, is it legit? Is there a product out there? Are the developers working on it, et cetera? So I don't want to get caught up in the euphoria of buying into it before it comes to market. I just feel it's a little bit too risky for me. 
Um, Next step here is don't buy without doing your research. I looked at a lot of different pieces out there. Check out the white paper. Look at the development team. Uh, call the company. Make sure that they're a legit, real company, that they're actually doing what they say they're going to do. Um, and check people. Check their backgrounds. Check their references. But do your research out there. I mean, simple things like a, a badly written ICO can be a major red flag. And you don't want to put your money into something that you feel has a high probability of disappearing. I mean, we as traders would never do that in the financial markets. If it's a low probability trade, I'm not going to make that trade. Next step here is don't buy off of emotion. They do a wonderful job in the ICO space of creating that fear of missing out, right? There's this little timer window and you have the next 36 hours our token sale. Don't miss it. If you act early, you'll get a 20% bonus. They create this emotion for you and that will drive you to put money in there. Um, a lot of it's going to just disappear. So don't buy off emotion. Buy off of what your brain is telling you. Read the work, buy into the project or not, but do your due diligence on it. Remember, there's a phrase out there that is very, very true and it could not be more true for this space, which is if it feels too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, if you guys really want to be entertained, go out and check out some of BitConnect's um, I guess they have conferences, a BitConnect conference, and it's it's legendary in this space because of all they were was just trying to create euphoria. It was like a Jerry Springer type show of craziness just to get people to put more money in when all in all it was just a giant scam up front uh, capitalizing off of people's emotions and way too good to be true. Well, that will do it for this session on ICOs and kind of how to spot ICO scams. I hope you have a much greater understanding of how ICOs stack up in relationship to other investments, such as an initial public offering. There's definitely some big differences there. Some people don't like the aspect of the regulation and all the loopholes you have to jump through. But if you're an investor, it's a safer way to go. If you are a risk taker, ICOs may have some great opportunity. I do think that there are some tremendous projects in the pipeline in the ICO space. but they are that needle in the haystack. Do your due diligence because every day you're going to read about headlines about people being scammed, and I pray that you, your family, and your friends aren't one of them. If you'd like to learn more about the digital space, blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and that type of thing, you can visit otacademy.com to get more information on any of those classes, a lot of the free webinars we've done and free content. I look forward to you guys to seeing you in future sessions.